What's going on guys? Welcome to your 13th Photoshop tutorial and in this video I want to talk to you guys about the elliptical marquee tool and I also want to show you guys a few shortcuts that you can use whenever you're working with any selection tool. Now before I get to that what I did is I opened up a picture of my friend Dom right here. I actually stole it off of his uh, Twitter. So it looks like Dom just pounded a bottle of Aftershock. So he's probably feeling pretty good right now. And uh, actually, if you guys want to know the truth, it's 3.30 in the morning and I didn't want to wake him up. So he doesn't even know that I'm using his picture in this Photoshop tutorial. But he's going to wake up and, uh, you know, hopefully he'll be cool with it. If not, going to get some angry texts in the morning. No big deal. So uh, here's Dom right now. And the important thing is in order to use the elliptical marquee tool, it's right by the rectangular one. It's a little one with a little oval with the dotted lines. So go ahead and select that. And of course, whenever you start playing with it first, it's pretty much the same as the rectangular. You got the normal new selection and you also got your add, subtract and intersect. So add, add to that selection. So it looks like, I don't know, a weird pond. That's what it reminds me of. What does this selection remind you of? That's one of those uh, tests that they use to test crazy people. But anyways, you know, I'm getting kind of sidetracked here. Your, uh, wow, this is looking really weird now. Uh, your add, subtract, intersect, all that stuff. We already know that from before. We don't need to cover that. But what I do want to talk about, and I'm going to hold it on Control D, make that D selection, is the first shortcut I want to talk to you guys about is holding down the Shift key whenever you're using this selection tool or the rectangular selection tool. So unlike before where you can basically make any shape oval, long, tall, perfect, what you can do is if you hold down the shift key, it automatically snaps to a perfect circle. So if you always are trying to make a perfect circle and uh, you know your you know, dexterity is just off by a little bit, you can cheat by holding down the shift key on your keyboard. So just go ahead and release your mouse and then release your shift and bam you got a perfectly circle selection so then we can go ahead and you know do something like cut that out and cut Dom out of the image but if you hold control Z it's gonna pop control D we're back to normal so after that as you can see whenever I made that selection and I cut it you notice that it didn't cut in a nice crisp line that's because I was messing around with this before and I changed this setting right here this is called feather and what it does is it pretty much does exactly that feathers out the edge or some people may call it a gradient so it doesn't select a nice crisp circle it actually fades your selection a little bit. Now if you do want a nice crisp circle then you're going to want to set that feather to zero. What this does is it gives you a nice hard edge. So now let me go ahead and select this and cut it and check it out. There is your nice hard edge and that's actually a default. What I did is I actually changed that to 20 before but well the important thing is that's what feather is. Feather, gradient, tomato, tomato. Now, another cool thing I want to tell you guys is how to select the inverse of a selection. The inverse of a selection. What the heck does that mean? Well, go ahead and make a new selection and say that we want to um, cut everything out of the image except, you know, Dom's face. So what we can do is we can hold shift and make a perfect circle around Dom's face right here. And let me just go ahead and do this okay right there now like I said we want to keep Dom's face in here so if you go ahead and cut this right now well that has the opposite effect so let's go ahead and step backward and what we need to do is we need to select everything except this selection right here so in order to do that what we need to do is go to select inverse now whenever we click this what it's gonna do is it's gonna look at your selection see what's selected and then say you know what that's what I'm gonna not select I'm gonna select everything but that so now even though it looks like there's a dotted line and this is still selected what this is actually saying is you know what all of this stuff is selected around here so now if you go ahead and cut it check it out Dom's face remains and everything outside it is cut from the image pretty freaking sweet huh so again that's select inversed or excuse me, inversed. What the heck is that? So now let me just go ahead and I probably messed this up. 
So I'm just gonna go ahead and open it again. Uh, where are you at, Dom? There you go. So the last thing that I want to talk to you guys about is just a real quick shortcut. Probably could have talked about this before, but if you have your selection tool and you just have all your defaults, normal, new selection, of course, look what's going on whenever I select this. It starts wherever I click and it ends up basically where my ending cursor is. But some people prefer an alternative type of selection and how conveniently if you hold down the alt button, think of this as alternative, you see how that connects in your brain? Hold down Alt on your keyboard and click and drag. And now you can see your selection is no longer starting where you clicked and ending up where you let go, but it's moving in a circle from the center out. So if you want to make a selection and you want the center of the selection to be Dom's nose or something, hover over Dom's nose, hold down Alt on your keyboard and drag out. Now, however you make your shape, the center is always going to be Dom's nose. So let's go ahead and just select the inverse of that, edit, cut, and bam. This is our final beautiful picture of Dom, Dom wasted after drinking a bottle of Aftershock. Nonetheless, thank you Dom, and uh, thank you for everyone else for making this tutorial possible. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I have to go let my dog out to pee before he poops on poops and peas on my rug. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.